Thankful meeting tonight. Thankful that, thankful for each one that has joined us to listen to the good news message of the gospel. Let's sing number 141. 141 says, Out of Christ, without a Savior. Oh, can it, can it be like a ship without a rudder on a wild, a wild and stormy sea? Out of Christ, without a Savior, lonely and dark the way, with no light, no hope in Jesus, making bright the cheerless day. If you're out of Christ, without a Savior, we're glad you've joined us. We hope by the reading of God's word that you will have peace by the end, by the end of the hour that is ahead of us. Number 141. Out of Christ without a
We'll just open the meeting with a word, a prayer. Our Father, we are thankful we can approach Thee in prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, commit ourselves to Thee for Thy help and Thy care this evening as we would seek to open Thy Word, the Bible, and to speak a little from it, to to speak a little of the the truth and the the wonderful truth that we can find in the word that thou hast so graciously given to us we're thankful we can know the mind of god we can know the 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 will of god it is thy will that all men everywhere be saved our father we would long this evening to hear of sinners, lost sinners, turning to thy great provision of the Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son. And so, our Father, we pray for help. Guide our words. Be with us as we speak a little. Pray for a speaker and listener alike. That thou was, we know that thou... I was bless each one that is here. We pray that thou would be with us now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. That was a solemn hymn that we just sang. Oh, to be without a savior. 176 is the next hymn. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches where all mortals dwell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. It's a hymn Focusing now on God's love. We were lost. We were, as sinners lost, we're like a ship on a stormy sea. But God's love has reached out to sinners like us to give us peace and forgiveness of sins. So 176. The love of God is greater
Happy to see each one. I'm, my name is Simon Hammersmark. I'll be opening the meeting, the gospel meeting tonight for Mr. Donald Hammersmark from the assembly here at Abbotsford. Meetings, there are further meetings coming this week on Wednesday evening, 7.30. We're studying uh, we're for prayer and Bible study, 7.30 p.m. We're studying Hebrews beginning, the, the beginning of chapter Chapter 11. Next Sunday morning at 10 a.m., as today, for the remembrance of the Lord, followed by Sunday school at 11.30, and uh, gospel meeting as tonight at 7 p.m. More than welcome to be with us, to join us. We'd love to see you gather here with us to listen to the Word of God, to learn more about God's Word and all the meetings are announced in the will of the Lord. The Lord be not come. Now, if you open the Bible, please, to the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 8. Here's a little Mother's Day wisdom for, for, for you tonight. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, or the precepts of thy mother. Hear the instruction of thy father. And that's not just hearing, but taking it to heart and forsake not the law of thy mother. And I wanted to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5, verse 15. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hands. Verse 14, but those riches perish by evil travel. And he begetteth uh, a son, and there is nothing in his hand. He, he, as he cometh forth from his mother's womb, it's the main point I want, naked shall he return to go as he came. And let's see, we'll read further in Mark. Mark chapter 4. Mark's Gospel, New Testament, and chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And verse 35, in the same day, this is story in the life of the Lord Jesus. He came to this world. He lived for 33 years in this world. We only know, we only have recorded for us really three of those years, his public ministry. Here we are, we will read a little bit here uh, in verse 30, uh, verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, he saith, the Lord Jesus saith unto them, his disciples let us pass over to the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him, the Lord, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, 
and the waves beat on the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he saith unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the seas obey him? The wind and the seas obey him. But I was, I was interested in that. I've been kind of wondering at that question and that the disciples asked him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Uh, that kind of strikes me a little bit. Now, lastly, I'd like to read uh, in First uh, Peter, First Peter, chapter five. The Sunday school kids will have to excuse me on this message. I I'm reusing some uh, recent lesson, but <clears throat> First Peter, chapter five, verse seven. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, I know this is written to Christians, believers. I just want to maybe take it a little out of context tonight. Apply it to, to us, to, to if you, if you're unsaved. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Mothers. I read a little bit about mothers. And uh, it's not going to be the main theme of my message, I guess. But the, the word care is, is what I, I was thinking about. Uh, the word care, the idea, the concept of, of caring. Caring. That question we read whether the disciples asked the Lord, carest thou not that we perish? We want to point you tonight to one that does care for you. Mothers, I, I work in a hospital and I work with a lot of people who are, uh, who are pretty down, down the path sometimes of, of sin in life and, and who are, are who are pretty low in life, down and out, some would say. Some would say, be harsh and harsher, a little more harsh and say deadbeats. Some of them, some people. It seems like almost inevitably behind each, each person, each soul, there is a mother a mother that cares for that person. A mother who loves that young man. We read that verse. A mother, you've, you come into the world naked. Your mother, a mother bears, there's something very special about a mother. And, and a mother suffers tremendously giving birth and bearing a child and giving birth and and caring for a child and 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 the sorrows that she experiences when a child uh disappoints a mother through life inevitably to some degree or another and a mother it's, i I, I'm, I never cease to be amazed at the love the love of a, of a mother caring Now we want you to we want to point you to one tonight that cares for you more than your mother that cares for you tremendously that cares for the the security and the 
safety of your soul tonight, your soul, your soul that is going to live beyond this little tiny vapor of a life that we're living in this world, in this scene of time. Can't believe lately the weeks are just going by so fast. I don't understand how time flies like it does. We're already at another Sunday. Time's going by so fast. We're getting older. We're nearing the end of our little vapor of time here on earth. And then what, my friend? We, we, our bodies, as we read, they return. They return to the earth. But your soul, your soul, God breathed into man. We read in Genesis, and man became a living soul. A soul that will live for eternity. Are you prepared for eternity? Is your soul covered by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been cleansed? Have you been saved? Do you have peace in your heart? Do you know firsthand? Have you experienced the care of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one, the one who loves you? Well, we read about that one of my favorite stories, I suppose, in the, the New Testament. Well, I, I, I shouldn't rate the stories of, of the Bible. <laughs> There's so many good ones. But it's, a, it's an interesting story about how, we read in Mark there, about how the Lord Jesus is found in this boat. This little boat, probably pretty small, with his disciples on the stormy sea. And I wonder if that's what your life is like tonight. Is your life a stormy sea? Is that how you, is that how you look at your life tonight? Can you not, are you not able to handle your life? Is it, is it just one problem after the other? It is just one disappointment after the other it, and one failing after the other, one fall, It doesn't seem like you can, it doesn't seem like you can live good enough. Are you, are you, are you trying to, to work your way to heaven and, 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 and everything just is not working? Life will seem like a storm if you're not depending upon God. If you're not depending on the, on the Savior. If you're not, if you don't have that spiritual life that God is offering you tonight. Life will seem dark. Life will, will, you'll have no hope. You'll have no peace. And that's because you are spiritually dark. You're not. You haven't been quickened. You haven't been made, uh, uh, you haven't been joined spiritually with God, as it were. Relationship is broken, and you are living in darkness, headed to a lost eternity, headed to judgment for your sins. If you've never relied, if you've never come to rely and depend and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. And I, and the disciple asks the question, or it makes a statement almost, carest thou not that we perish? Who is the Lord Jesus? He is the Son of God. He is uh, that one that we can read of, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son who came into this world. He gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
The Lord Jesus is the one that came into this world, and, and we read of how he walked through that nation of Israel. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He raised the dead. He spoke words of peace and words of, of hope. And he knew when he was there, he was, when he was here, he knew what was ahead of him. He knew what was coming. He knew that his own brethren, that the world, that humanity uh, as a whole, on a whole, was rejecting him. They hated him without a cause. He was a perfect man. There was no blemish in him. There was no sin that could be pegged on the Lord Jesus Christ. A man who perfectly displayed the heart of God. God is love. God loves you. He sent his son into the world to go that lonely path to Calvary's cross. He knew what was ahead of him. He even told the disciples that he was what was ahead of him, they didn't really understand. But he knew the sufferings he would endure on Calvary. He knew that he would be nailed to a cross. He, he allowed it to happen. But he knew that the, the darkness of the heart of men that, that worked together to, to, to open the way for the betrayal and, and the rejection of the Lord of himself, of the Lord Jesus. To the Calvary's cross he went. They, they beat him. They spat upon his face. They rejected him. They cried away with this man. We will not have this man to reign over us. They, they asked for Barabbas. The pilot wanted to release a prisoner. That was a tradition on the feast day. And, and, and they asked for Barabbas. A murderer, a criminal, in the place of one who loved, one who healed, one who gave life, who spoke words of peace and love. They chose a murderer. Oh, the darkness of the heart of man. I wonder if you see a little bit of that in yourself tonight. A little bit of sin. And that's an important place for you to come if you want to be saved. To recognize, yes, I am a sinner. I am, uh, I am guilty before God, a holy God. I am dead in my sins. Dead, the Bible describes it, dead in trespasses and in sins. Carest thou not? They were talking to one that cared so much, cared so much for your soul's salvation, cared so much for your, your eternal security that he came into this world to suffer all those things. He willingly endured the sorrows of rejection of his own people, he willingly endured the sufferings of, of pain in his own body. He willingly endured the, the sufferings of, a cru of crucifixion. Awful, torturous way of execution. Devised by the heart of man. He willingly endured the hours of darkness on Calvary's cross. What happened there, you ask? When God covered the scene in darkness, God poured upon who? The wrath, his wrath for sin. Who did God pour the wrath, his righteous wrath for sin that we had committed? Well, not upon us. He poured it upon his son, that one who he loved, that one who he sent to take our place, that one he, he sent to be the substitute for sinners like you and like me. And God 
poured upon his wrath upon him to the point where he was satisfied, to the point where he was, was where the Lord Jesus could say, finished. That was his cry. Finished was the work that was needed to be done to save your guilty, lost soul. And tonight, he has opened a way for you to be saved. What did he say to that storm? Peace, be still to the, to the winds. And the wind stopped, and the storm ceased, and the waters were calmed. And that could be your experience even tonight. If you would simply acknowledge your sins before a righteous and holy God and recognize, rely on, rest on what he did in all his care for you, his love for you. Acknowledge, recognize, accept that it was for me. Yes, all for me. O love of God, so great, so free. O wondrous love. I'll shout and say, he died for me. Can you call him your Lord and King tonight? Casting all your care upon him? Can you rest completely in this one who cannot lie? In this one that has died on a cross, not only died, he rose again, victorious over death. Death has been completely rendered powerless, been defeated, and he triumphed over death, and he ascended back into heaven. He's living. Can you rest in one who has done all this, who cares for you so much that he passed through this, who offers to you free gift of salvation, eternal security, and peace. Do you know the peace of God in your heart tonight? No, you know it is God's desire that you will know peace. He's offering to you salvation. He's offering to you peace, peace in your soul. And he has done so much for you. We hope as the meeting carries on that we hope and pray that you will trust him now, even tonight. Thank you all for coming and those who are online. I'd like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> a little late, maybe. But I was thinking of the Lord's mother today, you know. The verse in Matthew chapter 1 that says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when his, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. We know the Lord was born of a, a virgin. Yeah, but the virgin birth is very, very important. But, you know, I was thinking, you know, that it must have been a lot of reproach that Mary had to bear. And, and, and it was cast in the Lord's teeth at one time. They, they, they accused him almost, we are not for, of fornication. You know, the, um, when the Lord began his public ministry, uh, no, doubt, no doubt they sent inquiries from Jerusalem. Who is this? Who's this from Nazareth who's doing these mighty things? And they would have inquired into his into his background and how and, and they would have found out he's he's uh, the son of Mary. And uh, and it, they would have learned it the whole history. And uh, and of course Mary was the only and Joseph himself were the only the only ones uh, in the secret heaven heaven in, heavenly instructed by None other than Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. He, but uh, so so uh, that was cast in the Lord's teeth. But he never responded to it. No. But it must have been a cutting remark that they made to him. 
However, you know, and Joseph, he seems to pass off the scene. We know that he was the, he was the carpenter. The Lord Jesus was the carpenter's son. But then, just like a vapor, he disappears right off the pages of scripture. We don't hear anything more about him. That's what our lives will be like as well. Our life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Um, so those are just a few of the thoughts that Simon's message uh, brought to mind that I was thinking about this morning. I would, I'd like to read in uh, the Psalms and chapter 14 of the Psalms, verse 14th Psalm. My message is, well, I suppose if I was going to write, write over my message, I would write it's about the, the dynamic or the, the effective uh, action of, of humility. Uh, so in verse, in chapter, in Psalm 14, it's to the music, chief musician, the Psalm of David, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. This this uh, little group of phrase, this little group of verses, is repeated in in another psalm and in Romans chapter three. When God repeats something, it, it does us, I mean, he only has to say it once and it's, it, it stands, it's the word of God. But when something is repeated three times, uh, pay, pay, pay particular attention to it. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, each and every one of us. We're infected by that, by that sin that Adam uh, and Eve uh, created for which they were put out of the garden in judgment. But I was thinking of the Lord looking down, the Lord looking down. That's a, that's a, in, 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 in God's sight, everything is open and naked and he, there's nothing hidden from God. But, but I think of, of the Lord looking down from heaven uh, on the children of men, uh, he looketh upon men. He looked down upon men. The Lord looketh from heaven. Uh, he beholdeth all the sons of men from the place of his habitation. He look up, looketh upon the inhabit of all the all the inhabitants of the earth. Remember, he looked down in in Genesis, in Genesis uh, chapter five. He 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 looked down, and uh, the, the earth was corrupt, full of violence, and that, consequently the flood came. And judgment, God judged the world, uh, and, and only eight souls were saved through that tremendous flood. Again, in, in Exodus, the children of Israel were uh, slaves in Egypt, and, it's, and, 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 and the Lord looked down. He says, I have surely, uh, it says um, in Exodus chapter 3, uh, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them, to deliver them. He came down to deliver them. The Lord looked down. He looked down upon the inhabitants of the world from his habitation, from his holy habitation. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. He, he, that's his... That's his habitation, eternity. Um, we're living in time, but God dwells in eternity. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, that verse first I read was the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I don't understand atheists. I cannot understand a, a person who does not believe in God, who believes there is no God. Because we live in a creation and we are a creation. We created, we're created, uh, we're wonderfully, uh, wonderfully created. Uh, the bodies that we inhabit are just 
you've got life. Life came from somewhere. It came from God. There's no other explanation that satisfies the heart. Uh, a, a, a creation demands a creator. A, a, a masterful creation demands a masterful, a mastermind, a, a, a mastermind of, of intelligence, of wisdom and power. And so uh, there is a God and we have to deal with him. Uh, we're responsible to him. I think everybody can understand that. So the Lord, he looked down. He's, what he sees is a world of sinners. But he came down. He came down. The Lord Jesus said, I came down from heaven. The Father sent the Son. He came down to be the Savior of the world. The bread of God is he that cometh down. And this, is, this is the humility of God. Uh, and, and what God recognizes and what God looks for in in a sinner. I think I think uh, a perfect example of, of what uh, what I what I'd like to get across tonight is the story of Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thine house. That was and 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 he made haste and he came down and he received him joyfully. See that that's the dynamic. Come down. Take that humble place of a sinner. That's all God asks you to do is agree with God. God says, I'm a sinner. I agree. I, I, I know well in my heart. My heart convicts me. My conscience convicts me. I'm a guilty sinner and I need a savior. And thank God he sent his son into the world to be the savior of the world, to be, to the, to be the savior of sinners. He came not to be not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's that's humility. That's taken the place that God assigns to us. So he looked down. He saw us all in our need, and he came down. He came down in the person of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. God with us. In in, in the Lord Jesus, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily he was god with us and that's a tremendous tremendous truth and and we're going to be reading in our bible reading about faith and that's what that's what's required of, in us just to believe god to be god is able to communicate with us he's given us his word and this is his way of communicating with us in the day in which we live through his word and he expects us to believe what he has taught taught us and Hold us in the word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're going to come to that in our Bible reading, so I'm going to get ahead of myself here. But uh, yeah, it's it's trusting God, believing God. God cannot lie. The Lord Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, he said. So he, had, he made many claims, wonderful claims, and he proved them all to be true. So he came down. I was thinking of the Lord Jesus when he was here upon the earth. Remember that, that uh, incident when they, they brought a woman to the Lord Jesus, uh, claimed that she was taken in, in the act of adultery, and, and they cast her down at his feet. And um, it's in John chapter chapter eight, isn't it? And um, and uh, accused her and asked the Lord Jesus what 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 he was going to do about it. And um, and uh, the this they said Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground and then it adds as though he heard them not. He stooped down. When he was here, he, 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 he wrote with his finger on the ground and all those accusers, they, they, they left one by one. And I can't help but remember that in Exodus, in the book of Exodus, the Lord God wrote with his finger 
the Ten Commandments. He wrote with the finger of God on the tables of stone. Twice he did it. And the first first tables were smashed. Uh, but 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 he but he did it again. And I I can't help but think that those people those people those accusers were were convinced in their own souls of their guilt. And uh, the, the Lord Jesus says, uh, he said to them, he said, he that is without sin. Now, sometimes you'll, you'll hear it spoke, quoted incorrectly. He that is without sin, I've heard it quoted, let him cast the first stone. But they, but they miss those two very important words. He that is without sin among you, among you. The Lord Jesus was without, was without sin. If if he said if if who was without sin, he would have had to pick up the stone. He wasn't about to do that. He said, "He that is without sin among you, let him pick up." The, and they were all convicted in their hearts, in their own consciences, and they left one by one. He stooped down. I wonder, you know, when I think when I think of those tables of stone written with the finger of God, I I can't help think that they're buried somewhere. In, in the Middle East and some, you know, what a find that would be. What an archaeological find that would be. But, you know, um, it's just a, sort of a fantasy that I have. It's not a fantasy. I believe they're there somewhere, but could be in some dungeon or some cave, so who knows. But written with the finger of God. And I think of the Lord Jesus stooping down and writing with the finger, with the finger of God, writing on the ground. So he stooped down, he looked down, he came down, he stooped down. But as we've heard from Simon, he, he laid down. He laid down his life. He laid down his life as an offering and a sacrifice for our many sins. It was necessary for us to be saved, that our sins be dealt with righteously without any um, it had to be done right it had to be done in a, in a, in a way that would satisfy the, the righteousness and the holiness of God sins had to be dealt with early on from from the very from the very beginning of our Bibles it was, it was necessary that blood be shed for the covering of sin um, and it was necessary for our sins to be completely blotted out in the in the in the holy mind of God, that, that the blood of His only begotten Son, His beloved Son, be shed for sinners. An animal's blood could never take away the sin of a of a of a, of a sinner of a, of a human being. Animals can't sin. Human sin and humans have human beings or the or the or the or the ones with the with the need to have their sins forgiven. And it was necessary that a man man's blood should be shed to put away man's sin. But all men have sinned, so where was that man to be found? It was only by sending his own son into the world. Holy, harmless, undefiled, a perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, it was only possible for our sins to be blotted out if the Lord Jesus Christ would go to Calvary and lay down his life, lay down his life. It says, hereby perceive we the, the love of God because he laid down his life for us. First John 3.16. There's another John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he laid down his life. Joseph of Arimathea and, and Nicodemus, they, they wrapped his precious body. After Calvary, they wrapped his precious body in, in new uh, clean linen, uh, fine linen and, and laid, laid his body in Joseph's of Arimathea's uh, new tomb. 
And on the third day, he rose again. They came and those, those, those grave clothes were collapsed. They were empty. They were there as they lay. But just as the Lord Jesus um, in, in resurrection, he would appear in a room. He would appear in, in their midst without opening the door. He just appeared in, in, that was the nature of his resurrected body. And just, just like that, he, he just rose out of those grave clothes and left them lying there. They were collapsed. And he took the wrapper off his, off his head and he folded it and put it in a separate place. And he's in a separate place right now. He's in heaven right now. But, and he's coming again. But, but uh, yes, he's, he's triumphed over death. He, 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 he's a victor over death, as Simon's been telling us. He's, he's laid death, he's abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He's promising that same resurrection life to anybody who's childlike enough to, just to take him at his word and to believe what God has said. He wants you to come. He invites you to come. He came down. He came down for you. He came down for all mankind to put away our sin and make a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. Open a door that all may come in. Calvary's cross is where we begin when we come as sinners to Jesus. So he... He, 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 he looked down, he came down, he stooped down, he laid down his life. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. But then he sat down. He finished the work that he had to do at Calvary. He was buried, he rose again, and he went back to heaven. He said, I came forth from the Father, and I come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And, and Hebrews 1 and 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory, of the glory of God, and the, and, the, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He sat down. His work was finished, and he sat down. And now he's appealing for you to come to him, to come with your sins, to come with your burden. Just lay it down at his feet at Calvary. Look to Calvary and understand, God loved me. He gave his son to die on the cross for me. I need a savior. He shed his precious life's blood. He poured out his soul unto death. He laid down his life that I might have life. Life is such a precious thing. You know, life is such an enigma. How, how can we understand life? It, 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 it just, I, 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 I got some um, sweet peas, sweet pea seeds. Sweet peas, lovely flowers, but you know the seed doesn't look like anything. But I put them on the, put them between the papers and the uh, wet papers for two days, and then I put them in the in a little cup uh, full of soil, and in a couple of days, it springs life, life, and and that's going to produce. I'm hoping some really nice flowers, uh, very fragrant flowers. You know, uh, my grandfather was known for his. <laughs> championship uh, sweet peas so um, i'm trying to follow in that but but there's life life is life is so precious and life is and we can't understand it but it comes from god and he wants to impart it to each one of us a life that is full and abundant that will never ever end and it's a gift and he wants you to have it and you take it and you can take it and you can receive christ as your savior and be able to like like, like uh, Zacchaeus, come down, receive him joyfully, go on your way rejoicing. It will be the best day of your life if you trust Christ. If you've never done it before, do it tonight. Because now is the day of salvation. We pray. Thank you for listening. 
Our blessed God and Father, we bow once again with thankful hearts when we consider the lovely person of the Lord Jesus who came from heaven to be the Savior of the world. We thank that he did all things well. He finished the work and he's re returned to heaven. But we remember too that he's promised to come again. And so our Father, in view of the promise of the imminent coming of the Lord, we pray that no one will uh, waste another moment to on the, on, the, on the broad road to destruction, but receive Christ and, and, and have their fortune made for eternity, as it were. So we commend thy word to thee and pray for all who have been listening, not here, not only here, but wherever the gospel goes forth. We give thanks and ask these things in his most worthy, precious, and holy name. Amen. Let's just sing a short hymn and Closing number 161, Jesus will, sinners Jesus will receive, sound this word of grace to all who the heavenly pathway leave, all who linger, all who fall. Sing it, come and he will give you rest. Trust him, for his word is plain. He will take the sinfulest, Christ receiveth sinful men. Number 161, the meaning is over. Thank you. Sinners Jesus will receive, sound this